Hi there. My name is Vincent, and I work as a research advocate at Raza. At Raza, we're working on open source tools to allow you to write your own virtual assistants. So a lot of our work involves a research team, one that I'm a part of, and my job is to make sure that the algorithms and tools that we have inside of our technology stack are well understood by our community of developers. And as you can imagine, in my day-to-day -day work, it is very important that I communicate concepts clearly. Now, communicating things clearly in the age of remote work does mean that it might be good to invest in some tools. So what I would like to do in this talk is just give an overview of some of the tools that I've picked up, such that hopefully you are also able to communicate more clearly to your colleagues and or to your community. So let's say that I'm making a video. And the point of this video is that I want to explain code, which is something that I tend to do on one of Raza's YouTube channels. Well, then I can do a few things. I can use my mouse to say, well, uh, I'm importing a module over here and we can pay our attention to some of the numbers that are on display here. And although the mouse cursor works quite well, one thing that we should acknowledge is that the mouse cursor is quite small and you really have to pay attention to where the mouse cursor actually is and that can be a drain on the attention of people who are watching the video. So what I prefer to do is I prefer to use this app that doesn't just let me hover my mouse over something, it also allows me to effectively just draw. And there's a lot of benefits to this. Notice that when I draw a box around something that I'm importing, it's a lot easier to draw your attention to it. I'm also able to just squiggle under a little bit of code to emphasize that it's important. Note that it's also possible for me to draw some arrows. And what's really nice about this app is that I'm able to draw a circle and after a few seconds, it goes away when I lift my mouse cursor up. It's little things like this that can really help capture people's attention because it feels like I'm lecturing and drawing on a whiteboard again. And it's that feeling of a whiteboard that I think a lot of people are really missing when they're collaborating real time in an actual office. Now, the app that I'm using for this is called ScreenBrush. And here's the widget that pops up whenever I hit Alt Tab on my machine. Now, I have a dual screen setup. So typically when I'm actually recording, you don't see this in display. But what's also really nice is that I can toggle it on and off whenever I feel like it. In general, I think these squibbles are perfect for what I'm usually trying to do. But it is also good to observe that there's also tools for like actually drawing arrows. I can also draw boxes. And there's also an option to actually write some text. Another thing that's quite nice is that I'm also able to draw in different colors. So for example, right now the background is white. But if the background was, say, darker, then I can use maybe a green marker to emphasize something that you can look at. But what's also a great feature is that there's a shortcut that allows me to keep my drawings intact. Now, pay attention to the stopwatch over here. And again, notice that it's great that I'm able to draw this arrow, right? It's great that I can draw your attention to this one particular part. But notice that when I press the F button on my keyboard, that then the hourglass here changes. And I also notice that if I move my mouse cursor up, that the arrow is still there. Not only am I able to draw attention to something, I'm also able to literally draw over the entire screen. And that allows me to actually explain a concept whenever I need it. Very often when I'm talking about code, then I'm sometimes also talking about other concepts that are happening in the background. For example, maybe I'm explaining that we have a main Raza server that has to communicate to a database via the Raza SDK. And in this case, I can also explain that there's a separation of concerns and, and explaining all of these concepts is just a whole lot easier when you can have both the code on display as well as some of these other drawings. Now, what's also really great about this app is that I can press Control Z to my heart's content so I can remove drawings that I've made. And there's also some other useful shortcuts as well. 
I'm able to take things that I drew earlier and move them around. I'm also able to use a scissors tool to cut certain parts away. There's a lot to like here. And what I hope is clear is that the usage of this tool isn't just limited to explainer videos. This can also be great during Zoom meetings, especially if you have a one-on-one -on -one and you really want to get down to some details. Being able to draw is a very natural way to get ideas across. But let's now talk about a very human benefit of using this tool to explain things. What I'll quickly do is I'll press W, which is another shortcut. And basically this makes the whole screen turn white, so the screen actually becomes a proper whiteboard. I will now also press F to make sure that my drawings stay here. But what I can do now is I can say, well, let's talk about this one concept. Let's say that I want to explain an architecture diagram. And it's relatively simple, so I've got a Rasa server over here that is dealing with natural language processing tasks, let's say. And let's also assume that it has to communicate with another backend. Uh, I will call this the Rasa SDK. And it will be this service's job to talk to databases. And by drawing this like so, I hopefully made this distinction clear and the fact that there's a separation of concerns, let's say. Now, notice that because I'm drawing on an actual whiteboard, that I'm able to explain a concept as I'm drawing. And this has one amazing benefit. The drawing determines the pacing. You might recognize the feeling that you can get when you see a PowerPoint presentation where big architecture diagrams are drawn in one go, and it takes a while before you're actually able to process what exactly you're looking at. Because you're drawing from scratch, you are also forced to tell the entire story as a presenter. And it also means that it's hard to go too fast. Because you have to draw everything, it also means that concepts have to be introduced one by one, which from a teaching perspective is a great constraint to have. And I hope it's easy to imagine that if you force yourself to actually give a presentation via a whiteboard, that the ideas tend to stick a bit more because they've been properly introduced because we're not going very fast through all the different concepts. Now note that another cool feature from this package is that the drawing that I just made might be very conceptual, but if I now press Alt-Tab again, I'm back into my code notebook. And if I want to go back to the concept again, I can now hit Alt-Tab again, and the whiteboard just pops up again. I'm able to make a drawing of something that will keep in memory for a while that I can refer back to. And that's also really great when you're trying to explain something that, you know, is very technical and perhaps also very complex. Now, at this point, you might be wondering, how is this guy drawing so fast with his mouse cursor? And the truth is, I'm not using a mouse cursor. I actually made the investment to buy a Wacom tablet for this use case. There are a lot of these tablets out there. I believe you can also use your iPad for this. But I really like the Wacom tablet because it's really good for just this one thing, which is drawing. The tablet specifically is the Wacom One which I believe is the cheapest one in their line of drawing tablets where you can see the drawing that you're making. But I don't want to suggest you need this specific tablet. There's also cheaper ones out there. And the main goal here isn't to buy fancy hardware. It's just to be able to make drawing a little bit easier because drawings are just a great tool for communication. And I would like to give a couple of examples where I've been able to add drawings besides just in my live videos to get concepts across better. So here's an example question from the Raza forum. This is a place where our community members can ask us questions about anything related to Raza. And there's a particularly good question being asked here. It's about this machine learning model that we've made. And there's a user here that's asking about details about this very specific edge case where there's only sparse inputs going in. And this is a great question. But how do you actually give a proper answer to such a question? Well, one thing that you can do is you can grab the architecture diagram, which is what I'm doing in my answer below here. And next, what I'm doing is I'm taking it apart. 
I'm removing concepts that aren't necessary so parts of the architecture wouldn't be relevant. And again, I'm able to highlight where the developer needs to pay their attention. And it's this extra bit of context that is very helpful. By having a drawing here that specifically tells you what to pay attention to will also tell you what I am talking about. So there's less noise in the communication. There's just a bit more clarity. And the nice thing about making drawings like this is that if there's still something that's not unclear, it's also easier to get a precise question that is being asked. And that's actually what happened in this conversation. The user is now actually using the same diagram that I made to zoom in on a specific part of the diagram and can therefore also request my attention to go there. Which is exactly what happened. I then also started zooming in on the part below in this architecture diagram. I came up with a drawing that serves as an example. And then below, I give even more details where we can talk about the precise numerical operations that are happening. And what's great when this is on our form is that it's not just this one user who's asking the question who will be helped by this. It will be our community at large. This answer will be saved for other people to also enjoy. And again, I just want to stress, what's really helping here is not just the fact that I'm willing to give an elaborate answer, but also the fact that I'm able to make these precise drawings. I really like to think that it's the clarity that you get from a drawing that's 80% of the result here. That's not to say, though, that a drawing on its own is enough. It really also helps if you're able to think about the story that the drawing is supposed to tell. So let's now talk about a few examples from documentation pages. What you're looking at here is the GitHub repository for an open source project that I maintain on behalf of my employer, Raza. Now, the goal of this project is to make more natural language processing tools available for Raza that support non-English languages. And there's a couple of tools that are relevant. We have tokenizers, for example. The downside of saying, well, I have tokenizers, having tokenizers is great, but maybe if you're just starting out, it will be nice to remind people what a tokenizer actually is. And for that, the easiest thing you can do is just add a little drawing. Now, there's a lovely little conscious thing that does happen here, though. What a tokenizer does is it takes a string as input, and it outputs a list of strings as output. The idea is that a sentence goes in, and separate words go out. What some tokenizers are able to do is do more than just split the text though. Some of them are also able to lemmatize. Now the example that I have here shows a sentence that is tokenized, and then the same sentence that is tokenized and lemmatized. What I'm going for here is that because I have two examples that use the same sentence, that there's also a very clear contrast between the output. A user who's not familiar with tokenization and lemmatization can look at the drawing and start wondering, well, what's different about the output here? And the hope is that by having a drawing like this, we are able to give the user enough intuition with a single example that we don't have to fully explain what lemmatization actually is. And notice that we do the same thing for featureizers. And we also did the same thing for fallback classifiers below here. Adding some drawings to your documentation can really also make it easier for people that are perhaps slightly less familiar with your domain, in our case, natural language processing, but are still able to explore what the package is about. What's really great about these drawings is that you're able to get a concept across without having to resort to jargon. Jargon is great, but only if you're on the inside of a domain. For anybody outside of a domain, jargon can be rather intimidating. And I would argue that adding drawings can be a great way to alleviate this. What you're looking at here is an open source package that I maintain personally. The name of the tool is called Clumper, and the whole point of it is that you're able to more easily deal with large chunks of JSON files. The library isn't doing something particularly fancy, but when you consider all the operations that you might be able to do on a JSON object, I hope you agree that it would be nice if we can add a couple of drawings that explain what's happening. So if you go to the API, 
For every command that I have in this library, I've also added a drawing that shows you what the operation actually does. So for example, let's go to the flatten keys command. The drawing here shows the representation of the data before and after the operation. And I don't just have this for the flatten keys method. I pretty much have a drawing for every method that is in here. And again, the whole point of this is that we still add an example below so you can in more detail confirm your belief of what should be the output. But a drawing will just be so much more intuitive because you can just eyeball what's going to happen. And this is what I think contributes to this package being easier to pick up, which is exactly what I'm trying to achieve in my documentation. Now, I've given you all sorts of examples for documentation, and I would like to think that these examples are great when you're in developer advocacy kinds of roles like I am. But I also want to emphasize that being able to draw is great when you're working on an open source project or together with a colleague. Here's an example of a issue in GitHub where I'm trying to explain what I think a certain component in a machine learning model should do. Sure, there's a lot of context in text that will explain what exactly I'm doing and why, but the awesome thing about having a drawing, again, is that my colleagues and collaborators can more easily pinpoint where I might be wrong, and it just makes iteration faster because we're spending less time communicating because we only need one or two of these pictures to get the ball rolling on an idea. Now, in this case, I'm showing more the mathy parts of communication, but I would also argue that making some of these drawings, they're also great for building user interfaces. Here, I'm making a mental note for myself for this user interface element that I'm working on, and I just want to highlight the important parts. The thing that works really well for me when I'm building UI components is that the level of detail on a drawing is just right. I don't spend too much time making a perfect drawing or a perfect Photoshop that's pixel perfect that someone has to follow, but I am able to be expressive enough to emphasize which parts are really important. There definitely has to be a selection element in my parallel coordinates chart. And I really want to attach color based on the columns, and it needs to be a UI element for that. And a drawing like this is enough to get started quickly and iterate on. Not too many details. And basically that whiteboard feeling is something that you have again if you just incorporate more drawings. And it's that feeling that I really like having again, especially when we are doing remote work. Now you might think at this point, all of this is great, but do I really need to buy a drawing tablet? Is that what I need to do? Well, maybe not. If you want to get started getting clarity across, the main thing that you want to think about is just what picture do I want to draw? The main thing I'm trying to do here is get the right concepts across. And I would certainly argue that drawing definitely helps, but if you don't have a drawing tablet, maybe it's enough to make some of these elements inside of your favorite presentation tool. Keynote, Google Slides, or PowerPoint, they all have pretty good support to just make some boxes with text appear in them, and that can already be sufficient to get a pretty good drawing going. Simply make a screenshot of all the components that you're putting in here, and that can readily be shared inside of GitHub, on a form, or on Slack. In particular, if you're going down this route, there's also this other app that I can really recommend. It's an app that I do pay for, and it's called Noun Project. Effectively, any kind of noun has a black and white icon that you can just copy into a presentation. So let's say that I'm interested in doing something of a database. And sure, this one looks nice. I can just drag it in and use it to my heart's content. In this talk, I've been highlighting a couple of tools. In particular, I have my little Wacom tablet, and I'm using an app called ScreenBrush right now. But I hope that there's also a lesson that I'm able to get across that's a little bit more on the meta side of the spectrum. These are just tools, but the end result is that we achieve clarity. If you're able to communicate clearly, there's less communication necessary, and you're typically able to just get more done in your day. However, if you want to achieve clarity, 
it does mean that you have to use some of these tools consciously. You have to try to think ahead and think, well, what kind of person might see my drawing and what are some of the more confusing concepts? The tools that I'm talking about here are just tools in the end, but the main thing you want to make a mental note of is that empathy is actually maybe the first thing that should pop into your mind. If you can really imagine what it's like for someone not to understand the point you're trying to get across, then that understanding is going to contribute more to the clarity over here than any of these tools will ever do on their own. Having said all of this, I do hope that you give some of the techniques and tricks that I've shown in this video a try. Especially in this era of remote work, it can really be helpful if we can just get a bit more clarity and a bit more calm in our day to day. I really like to think that the techniques shown in this video have made it easier for me to communicate to my colleagues and to our community over at Raza. But if you have any questions about anything shown in this video, feel free to reach out.